Winning over an audience is never easy, but it's hard to imagine a much harder task than entering a series that already has a built-in audience, who are all hungry to spend more time with their beloved characters, and somehow still convincing them to make additional space for you in their hearts and minds. Rhea Seahorn had a pretty prolific career as a supporting actress, primarily in television series, such as Franklin and Bash, Whitney, and Veep. But it was in 2015, at the age of 43, that she earned a leading role in Better Call Saul, a prequel slash sequel to what many people consider the greatest series ever made, Breaking Bad. For creators Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould, it was vitally important they cast the new characters correctly, as Breaking Bad audiences already know who survives up until that point. But surprisingly, Kim Wexler would, in many ways, become the heartbeat of the series. Playing the partner of a criminal is hard to get right. Just look at Skylar in Breaking Bad, who received an unfair amount of criticism from some viewers. Audiences began to view her as a frustrating obstacle to the main character, and therefore she doesn't really get credit for how much she actually let him away with. So there was a challenge in front of Rhea Seahorn's Kim Wexler to somehow both enable and ground Jimmy McGill in a unique way. A balance that she and the writers managed to get perfectly right. Kim needed to be someone audiences understood, someone they cared about, someone they respected, and someone they feared for. As like all new characters in the series, these were the only characters that were at high risk of being killed. For me, there are three keys that make this performance work so well. Reacting, physical idiosyncrasies, and how she captures the character's rare moments of emotional vulnerability. Stella Adler famously said that acting is reacting, and perhaps through her years of playing supporting roles, Rhea is a masterful reactor. Most actors want to steal a scene by having the best lines, but somehow, she can steal a scene that she barely speaks in by just watching the other person's performance unfold. When we first meet Kim, she's sitting in a meeting at HHM that Jimmy crashes. The dialogue in the scene is all between Jimmy and Howard. There are four witnesses, but these other three are just empty bodies in the room. Our eyes naturally glide over to Rhea because she's reacting to what we're seeing unfold. She seems unimpressed by Jimmy's antics, but worried at the same time. Subconsciously, she's teaching the audience how to emotionally read the scene we've just witnessed. I am observant like Kim. The part of Kim that is constantly looking for what's not said, the subtext that's going on in the room. This is actually what Kim does in lots of scenes. She listens, observes, and reads between the lines. Rhea shows us Kim constantly calculating. She's not someone that emotes, she's someone that thinks before she speaks. This makes us value the few words that Kim says more than the rambling paragraphs that Jimmy says, because we know that she's actually considered the weight of what she's saying. So Rhea is a generous scene partner. She's not trying to detract from what you're doing, but she still manages to make what she's doing, no matter how little or subtle, mean just as much. Let's take this lunch scene as an example. The scene lasts for 4 minutes and 57 seconds, and in that space of time, these are all of Kim's lines. That's very vintage, but I'm good, just a nice tea. Uh, yeah, last August. I did, I was 6 years there, how did you know that? I was very fortunate, HHM put me through law school while I worked. Yeah, happily, it's a pretty standard arrangement. Yeah? Could I ask why we're here? I have no complaints about HHM. Well, I'm flattered, but there's clearly an ethical issue here. That's... I owe a lot to HHM. That's very generous. The rest of the five minutes is Rich talking, mostly in monologues. So on the face of it, this is Rich's scene. And on paper, all of Kim's lines come across as someone that's emotionally closed, professional, but not very interested. But is that how the scene feels? No. Despite Rich doing all the talking for five minutes, Kim is doing all the reacting. Certain parts of his monologue about not feeling valued emotionally resonates with her. Rhea shows us Kim calculating and thinking, and when certain things resonate too much, she releases a subtle reaction, like how her eyes squint here. Or she takes a big drink of water as the feeling washes over her. 
Without saying anything of any meaning or value, Kim is the star of this scene. We're reading the meaning of the scene straight from her face, even though it's buried under layers of professionalism. Being able to just sit and listen, yet steal an entire five minute scene is a unique skill. This is what helps her balance out a character like Jimmy, who's all bluster, lies, and razzle dazzle. She's communicating what we should really think and feel about what's being said. As another example where she's far more emotive, let's look at the scene where Jimmy reads his brother Chuck's final letter to him. On paper, the scene is all about Jimmy, as he's the one speaking, but Bob plays it nonchalantly, as if this means nothing to him, races to the end, even spoons some cereal into his mouth as he does it. Now Rhea could play this differently, she could be nodding along and smirking at his attitude, and that would communicate to us that, yes, yeah, screw Chuck and his stupid letter, but instead, her reaction is what highlights the tragedy of the scene. She starts off looking at the letter, reacting to certain lines, nodding in agreement. She starts to get uncomfortable, triggered by Chuck's line that he hopes he takes his words in the spirit they're intended. So she sits forward, anxiously bracing for impact, full focus. Talking about the day their mother brought Jimmy home from the hospital, Rhea emotionally reacts and now switches to just looking at Jimmy's reaction rather than the letter, because it's no longer about what's said, it's about how little Jimmy cares. Then as time passes, we can see the emotions stirring inside of her, manifesting in her eyes as they glisten with tears. It's too much now, she tries to contain it, but she's going to cry. Wipes her eyes, even looks away. And then we cut into a close-up, showing that Kim's reaction is all that matters here, because Jimmy isn't giving us any real emotion to read into anymore. He's closed off, whereas Kim is opening up. This is the balance that Bob and Rhea find together that make complex scenes like this work so well. Next is the character's physical idiosyncrasies that again allow us to read what's going on for Kim in each scene without her necessarily needing to say anything. Generally, Kim has very professional body language, mimicking the mostly male-dominated world around her. She's very closed off, but let's look at how much Rhea can communicate externally by just switching how the character feels internally. After Chuck tries to warn Kim to stay away from Jimmy, explaining that he used to rob money from his father's store, Kim is now unsure about him, and it's written all over her body language. She's sitting on her hands, looking at the floor, then grabs her items to leave, stiff as a board. But she's drawn back to the answering machine, and hears Jimmy leave a light-hearted message of him singing. So she just sits and listens, as the tension washes away. She visibly finds some inner peace, as if she's answering a question inside of herself. And now when she walks out, her body language is far more upbeat. She's visibly content. Part of Kim's professional body language is carrying tension in her shoulders, and Jimmy is what physically provides relief from that, not just by rubbing her shoulders, but even here, notice how the tension releases the moment she sees him as the elevator door opens. Another idiosyncrasy is how Kim uses her mouth even when she's not speaking. Whenever she's stressed or uncertain, she mashes and clenches her lips together. She also does something similar when she has something on her mind that she wants to say, but holds it back, so we can visibly see her lips wrestling the words. This happens consistently. When Chuck asks Kim to confirm to the doctor that he has no issues with his mental health, Have you ever seen me exhibit any sign, any sign whatsoever of mental illness? See? She lies, looks down, and then lip wrestle. We see her bite her tongue again, right after she discovers Jimmy changed the address on the papers to help her win back Mesa Verde. What? Just drive. She has so many competing emotions and conflicts of interest that she doesn't feel she can confirm that she knows anything, but it's still bursting out of her in every other way it can. Or when Jimmy decides to change his name to Saul Goodman, Kim physically doesn't think it's a good idea, but doesn't say anything. If this is how you're really feeling. It is. I say sure. Great, five minutes max. These little creative choices subconsciously give us huge insight into the character, 
and how she feels about each person and each event as it unfolds. As a trait, it so definitively Kim Wexler that even when they flash back to her as a teenager, they still direct the young actress to mimic the same lip movements when she's unsure what to say or do next. Another way Rhea embodies Kim Wexler is that when she's stressed, her hands get very fidgety. Kim is known for her contained body language, and as we discussed, holding back her words, listening, calculating, but her true feelings still find their way to the surface and sometimes, it's through her hands. She'll either fidget with an item, or her fingers will wriggle with stress themselves. And the final key is capturing emotional vulnerability. And although we've gone over all the physical quirks and manifestations that Rhea portrays without needing to say anything, this is more about the nuances of her speech. For the most part, Kim is a balanced, still calculating force of nature. Sure, sometimes she blows up at people and speaks her mind in an unfiltered manner, but usually she's restrained. So let's look at how vulnerability still works its way into her voice, as if there's this layer of emotion coating each word. Let's take a look at some examples. Sometimes she says virtually two identical lines, but communicates them in two very different ways. When Jimmy is contemplating quitting the law, Kim asserts her position, stating that she thinks it's a mistake twice. You are making a mistake. I know you're making a mistake. But notice the change in her inflection the second time around. There's pent up frustration. She feels she can't stop him. Her anxiety for him as a person and everything she wanted for him is seasoning the sentence with a new flavor. You are making a mistake. I know you're making a mistake. Yeah. Or when she disciplines Chuck for accusing Jimmy of fraud, her pitch goes high when she says she feels sorry for Jimmy. I feel sorry for him. And then goes low with pity and disgust in her tone when she says she feels sorry for Chuck. And I feel sorry for you. Two very different types of feeling sorry, and Rhea captures it all in her inflections. Or when she's petrified for Jimmy acting as a bagman for the cartel, she holds eye contact with him in fear I don't like this. I don't want you to do it. But notice how she punctuates each word to put it in the simplest language, almost to ensure that it's officially on the record. I don't want you to do it. And on the final word, her voice cracks a little, showing us her vulnerability. Sometimes just the way Rhea says a line tells us there's more to the story than she's willing to say. Take the deal. The way that her pitch lowers, you can hear a quivering in her tone. She's fearful for Jimmy, but we can also tell there's something she's not telling us. Other times, she puts vocal emphasis on the final word to punctuate the moment. When Jimmy rug pulls her at the meeting with Mesa Verde, notice her emphasis on the word Goodman. We need to end this meeting now so Rich and I can have a conversation with Mr. Goodman from professional to boiling with rage. There are layers of subtext to that line. Mr. Goodman. She never liked him taking on the name Saul Goodman to begin with, and now she sees this alter ego as another person she's dealing with. He's broken their agreement, so her voice breaks on the word Goodman, the name that's a thorn in her side. And finally, in her emotional discussion with Jimmy after their actions lead to someone they know being killed, Rhea is completely raw. Because I was having too much fun. <laughs> she's practically hyperventilating with tears, even though she's still trying to hold them back. The final word fun is said with such venom, bitterness and regret. Too much fun. The word essentially slaps her in the face and once it escapes her lips, she breaks down again, as she knows she can't forgive her own selfishness and has to escape. Whenever you think of a breakout performance, it's usually something big and flashy, something that grabs you because it's so memorable. You may have a line you like to quote or a physical mannerism you like to do an impression of, but what makes Rhea Seahorn's performance all the more impressive is that she managed to make herself stand out in a show filled with scene stealers by simply stepping back, observing, 
and reacting. She managed to say much more about the character by keeping her mouth shut and showing us what she's too scared to say. And she made us value her vulnerability by burying it deep under layers of self-protection so that when it does occasionally surface, we appreciate it all the more. Essentially, as Kim Wexler, she managed to prove that sometimes, less is more. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more of it, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, as it really does make a difference to how much content I can pump out. Or if you can't afford that, then simply like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to help the algorithm do its thing.